for the first time on television. Who is love for her? I got enough of her. Tell her shut up. Five families on welfare in Singapore open up their lives to our cameras. Sick and tired of like being chased out from the house. Over four months, we filmed in Bukit Mera, home to some of the neediest people in Singapore. We follow our families through crises. Twins only left for one bottle for one baby only. I just wanted to get out from this place. And see them through hope. Okay. Today got work, got money. This is life at the bottom, as you've never seen before. Bukit Merah, one of the oldest housing estates in Singapore. Here, you will find the highest number of public rental flats in the country. Home to some of the neediest people in Singapore. In this series, we take a journey into their little known and little understood world, following lives led under pressure. Meet eight-year-old Labelle Quek. This is her sister, Isabel. She's nine. As they do most days, the girls go to school without breakfast. Mum Chuan Chuan is 31 years old and seven months pregnant. She works part-time at a fast-food restaurant, earning $6 an hour. But she'll have to stop when the baby comes, and the family will lose a much-needed source of income. Over at Spooner Road, on the edge of Bukit Mera, Mas Linda and her husband Hanafi have their hands full. This is my two twins, Haifi and Haifan. And my two boys here, Firhan, Firhan and Firman. And I have this five days old baby. In this house, He's not the only one who needs diapers and milk powder. I worry about if they sick, and I worry about there's no milk, you see, and diapers, so I have to save some money for them. Even though if I can't buy my clothes, it's okay for me. Salbia Zaharuddin's seven-year-old son has just been discharged after two weeks in hospital. Now, the unemployed mother of six faces the prospect of hefty medical bills. He got four different appointments with four different specialists like the eye doctor, plastic surgeon, neurosurgeon and one more will be the trauma team. This is Suliana Sulaiman. She has been suffering from depression since her eldest son, Alif, died of liver failure in March. When I see kids running around, I still feel very emotional. I would just cry. Yeah. Then, uh, sitting at work, at reception sometimes, when my son came across my mind, just flash like that, I would cry. And meet 68-year-old Chu Peng Wah. Despite having asthma, he continues to work at a warehouse, moving fresh food supplies. 
，也是中国也是厦门来的。哎，你现在六十多岁，我那边五十多岁就要抱孙呐、啊，要去喝茶了，你还在做工？哎，我说新加坡嘞，不是中国嘞。<笑>啊、哦，新加坡你手没有动，就是口就要肚子就要饿了。我说。For most of Singapore's four million residents, government subsidies help make life a little more affordable. But there are many others who can't even get by day to day. The social service office is their last resort. The social service office is where the poorest go to get financial aid from the government. By 2015, there will be 24 offices across Singapore each located within two kilometers of the neediest citizens. <laughs> this is Esther. Her job is to make the hard decision to support the applicant or not. <sighs> she got two kids. Uh, I know. Uh, Two kids, but one of them is Rafiq one, right? No la! Huh? The bird right here, Rafiq. The, that one is there already. Huh? It is not easy for every client to choose to step into our office. Sometimes they really have to put down their pride and then just bear all the embarrassment, just walk in here. Why? So there must be a reason behind it. But then you got us doctor, why? You take medicine, then still... Like that. You tell me something like that, why? You cannot... Do anything, tell me like that. Mm. Esther is 28 years old, and this is her fifth year on the job. In the first year, people see that I'm a young girl who don't understand anything. So whenever they call me 小姐,小妹妹, I'll say, oh no, please address me as Miss Ho. Chan, you what do you usually eat every day? Because uh, I'm here to listen to you, to help you, and to see what I can do for you. Unemployed mother of six, Salbia Zaharudin, has come to get help in paying off her son's medical bills. Seven-year-old Erman was recently in a road accident. When I see the, uh, like, the bill that is quite high, yeah, because investigation like the brain, all this is about 440 per day. Right? Only the investigation, having the medicine, everything like that, so it's quite expensive. Any if they were to make me pay that sum, what was I don't know how long will it take for me to pay. Medical bills are only one of Salvia's problems. She's had no water supply for two months. They closed down the old account already. Four years, nobody like paid. My outstanding bill was like 1.8k. On 8th September, tragedy struck on this busy road near Salbia Zaharudin's home. Her seven-year-old son, Irma, was knocked down by a bus. When I first heard of his accident, I almost fainted because I was like shocked. I mean, I told them already not to go to Tiong Bahru Park and I didn't expect that his brother didn't come back with him and he went to Tiong Bahru Park alone, you see. He's only seven years old and he doesn't know how to, uh, what you call that, cross traffic by himself. After two weeks in hospital, Erman is finally home. He lives with his mum and two of his five siblings in a rental flat in Henderson Road, on the edge of Bukit Merah Estate. Tell me how is his injury? Basically, the injury is more to from here until the scar breaks or fracture. But this part is still very soft. That's why it's uh, not, fully, not fully recovered, just as I said. 
When I saw the injury myself, how bloated his face was, I was like very sad. Even his two, two elder siblings is crying. Until recently, the mother of six was earning nearly $1,500 a month as a shop assistant. After four years in and out of jail, the job was a fresh start and the first step to some much needed stability at home. But Erman's sudden accident forced a change in her plans. My work is like 7.30 to 4. So I can't, I can't come down to work because that is the time when doctor will come in and uh, tell his progress, you see. So uh, the whole of two weeks, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't manage to go to work. So it really, like, uh, financial-wise, is really very bad for me because I not only have him alone, you see, I got his other sibling to take care of too. Sometimes when he's asleep, I run, go back home because I need to clean the house, need to take care of the other siblings. For now, Salbia has put aside any hopes of working. Oman needs round-the-clock care and there are hospital appointments to meet. But each appointment is an extra bill to worry about. To make matters worse, the family has had no water supply for nearly two months. They closed down the old account already. Four years, nobody like paid my outstanding bill was like 1.8k. Accumulated a few years, one, two years like that. I tell you, it's an everyday headache, you know. I take pills, bottles from my neighbour place. That is how we survive. Salbia has applied for emergency help from the social service office. All she can do now is wait. Can I ask you, the medical card is uh, used only on government mm. you mean like, uh, clinics all that, is it? Yes, hospitals. Salbia is here at the social service office to collect a medical card. Not only me, With the card, Erman's medical treatment will be free. And for two months, she will also not have to worry about the medical expenses of her five other children. Did you ever feel ashamed about stepping into the SSO and getting help? If you want to ask, ask for help for myself, of course I feel, feel ashamed. But then for my kids, I all ashamed put one side. As a mother or a father, you, you will do anything just for your kids. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. What were you able to get from uh, I'm getting cash $800 from September to November. <gasps> then I assistant for uh, polyclinic. I only get the card now, but they stated here September to November also. Uh, then they are paying for the service conservancy and the rent. Financial burden lifted for the time being. Salbia's challenge now is to get Erman back to school. He's been resisting going to school for a few days. Uh, I think his self-confidence is really very low, uh, especially because of the scars on the face. He keep on like putting down his head to cover his scars. He doesn't want to, his friend to look down on him, like seeing him disfigured or something like that. Are there ways that you're trying to address? Keep on talking to him, like, saying everything will be fine. You see, if your friend don't love you, they won't uh, give you get well cuts. All he, his whole classmate. Eh? Mr. Chang? Yes. Esther's next client this afternoon is 79 year old Mr. Chang. He is unemployed and has been estranged from his family for over 20 years. So for the past two years, you totally stopped working, right? For totally the past no fun, no money coming in whatsoever. Then how have you been paying your bills? How have you been buying food, traveling? They borrow seal, that's the only thing. I can't even afford to eat a three dollar per day. Your children you know? doesn't support at all? No. Nobody support me. Mm, okay. Esther asked Mr. Chang if he would apply to the family court to legally compel his children to support him. I've already talked to them, they already know my situation Your for children. many years. Uh. I don't want to bother this. Okay. Yeah, okay. Even the large source I don't have. Uh. I don't want to bother them anymore. I told them, mm. I said, even the back, I don't come back to back from you. I need the help, mm. but I have my pride. Oh, I, I don't know how to describe that kind of feeling when I heard that. I feel that 
no matter what he has done in the past, what kind of mistakes he has made, children are still responsible to provide for their parents, especially when they are already so old. We will still assist him financially, but I will let him know lah, that during this period of assistance, he really needs to consider seeking assistance from, uh, seeking allowance from his children. It has been very common these days to see elderly being abandoned, neglected by their own family. It's quite prominent these days. I, it's really sad that all these are happening. What's life really like for those at the bottom? To find out, over four months, we followed five families on welfare in Singapore's Bukit Merah estate. One of them is Chu Peng Wah, 68 years old and still working five days a week. Uncle Chu lives with his dog in a public rental flat, just above the social service office. <laughs> Uncle Chu earns seven hundred dollars a month from his job at a warehouse. You think so you will not go on? You are a pink so you. I don't want to go on. 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 Okay, this time, payday has come and gone, and Uncle Chu has not been paid. He's come to look for his boss at the wholesale market. Wa Box. Hong Chuan Chuan has been working part-time at this fast food restaurant for two years. She makes $50 working just eight hours a week. On the face of it, Chuan Chuan could be earning much more. She holds a diploma in business administration and until 10 years ago earned $1,600 a month. She quit her job when her daughters were born and only returned to work five years ago. Office Chuan Chuan's husband Sky waits for her in a corner. 
he works in the kitchen of the same restaurant, also part-time. But he's on medical leave today. His health, he says, isn't that great. Hypertension and high blood pressure frequently plague him. Uh, The couple's combined income is about $1,000 a month, not enough to cover half of their expenses. With a baby on the way, the financial strain is starting to show in Chuan Chuan. In the next episode of Don't Call Us Poor, the arrival of the baby forces Chuan Chuan to face the stark truth about her husband. Maybe I consider myself as poor, or else I won't stay in a rental flat. If you say that poor, right? Poor is for people who like doesn't have food, doesn't have a roof over their top. I have money for for me, my kid, especially for my kid to spend. I got even if I have no money, I got food in the house. You see. Financially, I'm not able to afford a lot of things. But in my health, I feel very happy.